Hybrid structures are constructed using a wide variety of materials. In Corrales, New Mexico, just on the outskirts of Albuquerque, designer Ted Owens designed and built his own house using both conventional and progressive building techniques. It balances the best of both worlds by generating electricity with high-tech photovoltaic panels on the roof, while using low-tech straw bale and adobe walls for stabilizing interior temperatures. Despite the structure's small footprint of 800 square feet, each room feels spacious and bright. By building the home no larger than was needed, money could be put into aesthetic elements instead of square footage. Detail and design were as important as energy efficiency. The choice of materials was based on their visual appeal, ease of use, energy efficiency, and the amount of embodied energy. That is, the amount of energy it took to actually manufacture the material. Windows were positioned so that natural light would filter into the entire living space from at least two sides of each room. In addition, they were carefully placed to ensure good ventilation and also to direct the eye to the outdoors from key vantage points. This design technique is useful in opening up small spaces visually, thereby making the rooms appear larger than they really are. I built this house as kind of an experiment. It was to see what it was truly like to work with sustainable and green materials what kind of difficulties there might be in the process of working with them, and what worked really well and would be very easy for any person to incorporate into their own structure if they happen to be building one. The opportunities for combining low technology with the high technology, to me, it's really exciting. I mean, you have these materials like straw and mud, and you're combining them with very high-tech materials like silicon photovoltaic cells on the roof that are converting sunlight into electricity. One thing I found that was quite nice and quite a nice balance to building with sustainable materials is that there's a beautiful aesthetic to it. It's a very soft aesthetic. It's, it's very different. Walls are straight, but not totally straight. There's kind of a handmade quality to things. Unlike wallboard and frame construction, which is what the majority of all houses are made out of today, you have to be absolutely precise. You've got to have 90 degree angles. Your wallboard has to be flush with the next piece that it butts up against or else the whole aesthetic falls apart. I mean, you get cracks and bumps and it just doesn't look right because you're dealing with a very hard angular material. With natural materials, you can actually form these walls with your bare hands. You kind of warp things into position because it's all kind of pliable and flexible like clay. I mean, the adobe, literally, you can stack the adobe bricks, put in subtle curves, the corners you can actually come in after the fact and, and sand them to nice radiuses and you don't have to be stuck with the hard edges. Since my background is as a designer, obviously the aesthetics had to play a very important part of this. And I think this is actually something that is sometimes forgotten or missed in sustainable design. That if the house is not aesthetic or the building or whatever it is you're making, it's probably not gonna last as long. You need to have structures that feel good, that look good visually. And this is something I think is missing quite often in our cities and towns today, particularly in houses. I think one of the biggest challenges if you're gonna build your own house out of green materials, it's the research stage. There's always gonna be compromises. There's no one material that is always gonna be better than one over the other. Straw bale is a great material. However, if you have to import it a thousand miles by truck, maybe that isn't quite as sustainable as something else that might be available in your area. The other material I chose that was very important to use for thermal mass on the inside was adobe. Adobe in this area in New Mexico is very easy to obtain. It's locally produced and it's a very easy material to work with. The wall covering in this house is actually mud. And I mean pure mud right out of the ground.
For large dimensional lumber, that is, anything over 6 by 6 inches, we always used recycled wood and made an effort to feature it in the construction. By doing this, we were able to have the aesthetic advantage of heavy timbers without cutting down old growth trees. I obtained this lumber from either salvage yards or local renovation projects being done by friends. The first thing we built was a workshop, which will be in lieu of a garage. This allowed us to experiment with building materials and techniques, which would be later used in the construction of the house itself. These included the rubble trench foundation, adobe walls, and cob infill on the gable ends. 